Welcome to the program. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Mark Goldberg, and this is Mark Vlogs Watches. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. We are going to talk about Vincent's question about buying a Rolex from an AD while on vacation, but we have this quickest little bit of housekeeping to do first. It's easy. Just sit there. I'll take care of everything. Quick fist watch check. Guys, I'm a dog trainer. Please support me and this channel by buying a copy of my latest book, The Art of Training Your Dog. Hardcover or electronic, you can get it globally. If you're not a dog lover, buy it for someone who is and subscribe to this channel so we can do this again soon. Throw a like on this video. Now let's get along with the fist watch check. And today I am uh, I'm wearing uh, a quartz, <laughs> a little quartz watch from uh, Long Island Watches. Okay, what about buying a watch on vacation? So uh, Vincent writes that he's going to Puerto Rico and uh, he knows the AD in the area where he's gonna be, or at least he looked it up, he found a Rolex AD. And um, he, he ro Vincent said he was a little unsure whether he would need an appointment in order to be able to sit down and chit chat with the, um, with the AD, which if you know anything about Rolex, uh, you know, no, you don't need an appointment. You need an appointment to pick up the watch that they have pre-sold you, uh, but you don't need a watch to just you know waltz on in there. So Vincent, just by asking uh, whether you needed an appointment to get in to see the shop, um, you kind of reveal yourself as a newbie. Not that that's a bad thing, but there were all sorts of details missing from your letter to me, which is, do you have any history buying Rolex from any AD, let alone from this particular AD in Puerto Rico? Clearly, the answer is going to be no. So what Vincent did was he emailed the AD and he said, hey, do I need a, an appointment to come in and talk to you guys? And they said, of course not. Just waltz into the store during business hours, we will be happy to see you. And now that's exactly how I would expect any AD, any jewelry store, to, uh, to, to, to return your email, to respond to your email like that. Before we talk about the essence of Vincent's exact question, which is, you know, can he buy a watch on vacation? What are his chances? Let me first remind you a little bit about the relationship between Rolex and the AD. People think of Rolex as a monolith. I'm mad at Rolex because the AD did this, that, or the other. Rolex is as far from a monolith as you could possibly imagine. Rolex, in fact, is, it's like the Hydra, the multi-headed beast. Um, Rolex is a snake with many heads, guys. And what do I mean by that? Well, first, when we talk about Rolex, you have to understand there really is only one Rolex, and that is the manufacturer with multiple plants and you know giant staff and multiple buildings and R&D and a foundry and diamond cutting and all sorts of things in Geneva, Switzerland. They manage and manufacture and distribute the Rolex brand of watches. But Rolex doesn't sell to you and they don't sell to me. Rolex sells only to a chain and network of authorized dealers. Now, some of these ADs are single jewelry stores, one off, you know, what, like a single mom and pop shop in, uh, in Albany, New York, where I've been, had a very pleasant chit chat with the owner. Uh, that would be a, a, a case of Rolex selling to an individual AD because they wanna be in that market and they found the right guy to represent them there. Uh, in other cases, there are, um, there are corporate chains of ADs such as Torno, which I don't really actually know how many units they have, but they're in multiple cities including Las Vegas and New York as an example, and Rolex serves them as an AD. Uh, there's my AD, James and Sons, which has several units, um, Naperville, Orland Park, Chicago. I think I'm getting that right, James and Sons. Anyway, this is the AD and Rolex are two different creatures. Rolex supplies the AD, the AD supplies you and me or whoever they want, and which unfortunately, Rolex is not supplying enough watches to its network of thousands of ADs around the world for them to have enough inventory to satisfy the demand that you, me, and everybody else has for these watches. That's pretty much why Vincent is asking this question. Um, so let's, let's jump into it. Vincent's going to appear in uh, Puerto Rico, San Juan, or wherever it is, and he's going he's gonna to pop into the AD. Hi, you know, how are you? I'm, I'm Vincent. I emailed you. And they're going to be like, oh, well, uh, yeah, bienvenido, senor. Thank you for coming. We're, we're very happy to see you. Um, and what, Vincent, what you're going to find at that AD is what you're going to find at any AD anywhere in the world, which is a bunch of Rolex cases lightly populated by a sprinkling of uh, watches 
and a little tiny card in front of the case which says exhibition only. And uh, these are working watches, and if, the, if they're a nice AD, and most of them are, they will let you look at the watches. They may let you try on one at a time. They will ask you all sorts of questions. Where are you from? What do you do? What kind of watches do you have now? Do you have a Rolex? Um, and you're going to be saying, well, I'm from Suffolk, New York, and I'm a lawyer, an accountant, whatever it is you're doing. No, I don't have a Rolex. But what that AD in Puerto Rico is not telling you is, uh, hey, buddy, you're like the 15th guy in on vacation in the last day and a half because it's a vacation spot. Now, there are places in the world where it's not that nobody lives in Grand Cayman. People live in Grand Cayman, but there's a big, beautiful AD in Grand Cayman. And I bet you that in Grand Cayman, they probably sell the majority of their watches into the tourists. Who, who come and go. Uh, but there are people who go to the Grand Caymans repeatedly and are wonderful store, wonderful customers of that AD or that store. People who go there specifically to buy jewelry, right? So even in the Grand Cayman, where they may be selling to tourists, I believe by and large, uh, the rare and difficult to acquire stuff, like almost all of the Rolex, they're gonna be selling to people who are known to them. But then you have ADs and other fairly tourist traveled places such as Paris, Rome, Puerto Rico, Bahamas. And um, there are a constant stream of travelers walking in there going, hey, yo, let me look at a Rolex. And they're like, yeah, okay, here you go. And they'll, they'll, they'll let you look at the Rolexes. They are polite. They really don't want you yelping, uh, these guys were you know, mean, rude, cheap, and nasty. However, the chances of them selling you a watch are very, very, very slim. Now, first, I wanna recognize the fact that there will be people watching this video right now who are like, hey, baloney, I walked right into an AD in 1987, or maybe it was even last year, uh, you know, while I was on vacation and bought a watch. If that happened to you, I feel like you got the, um, the chocolate bar with the golden ticket in it, <laughs> and you got your ticket to Waka Land, which is good, good on you, and congratulations, and do me a huge favor, tell me about that in the comments on this video to give some hope to Vincent and other people that are going on vacation with an American Express, no limit, and it's burning a hole <laughs> in their pocket. Um, so if, if that happened to you, let me know. On the other hand, if you've gone on vacation and you watch shop and you had no satisfaction whatsoever, um, I, tell me about that too, because I, I, I'm really curious uh, about your thinking here, but here's my thinking. The AD, by and large, in most places, has been requested gently by Rolex to sell to people within their territory, within their range um, of where they live. And that's because I think that Rolex corporate, Rolex Switzerland, would like to stop people from calling all over the world, buying watches by telephone, ruining the, the upscale retail experience that Rolex wants you to have at the AD. And then those ADs are shipping those watches you know, in an impersonal way. It, it almost would become like online sales. And I feel that, listen, there's a lot of companies will sell you out of their online boutique. Um, um, Breitling does it, Omega does it. I think Rolex is gonna be the last guy on earth to do that. They're very stodgy, very old fashioned. So the reality is, is that the chances of you buying a Rolex on vacation are pretty low. Now, on the, one, on the one hand, on the other hand, like, listen, if you want some weird Cellini that's been sitting in their case for, you know, like a year and a half, um, you know, or if there's some little tiny 28 millimeter diamond bezel, pretty little thing, um, you know, that you want to get by way of lady date just for your wife. Okay, they may be selling you that. But Vincent, you didn't say which model you wanted, but I'm going to make a guess. You want a GMT, or you want a Submariner, or you want a Daytona, you want any of those. You probably don't even want an Air King, a Milgauss, or an Explorer 1, or an Explorer 2. You want the hotter stuff. But literally everything I just mentioned is too hot to touch. You, 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 can you get that stuff on vacation? Guys, I want you to tell me about it in the comments, but I don't think your chances are any better um, than getting it um, at your local AD, and in fact, I think the chances of you getting treated well and being taken seriously by your local AD are a bit higher, in fact, than on vacation. So let me wrap it up on this. Um, 
go watch Shopping on Vacation. I do it, you do it, we all do it. Um, and if I was able to purchase something on vacation, I've never been able to. I've, God knows I've tried. Uh, but I've just never been able to pull that off. Um, even when going in wearing, you know, wearing a Rolex. Um, that way they know some AD loves me. Uh, but the reality is it's going to be easier, as hard as it is to make a relationship with your local AD, that's still going to be easier than making one with somebody where you're on vacation and you're in town for a couple days and you're never going to be back there again. You're certainly not coming in for gold and diamond jewelry because you don't live there. And that's what they really make their living off of. So I feel like take the time to uh, really invest in visiting your local AD over and over and over. Don't be a pest, but show up. Express your interest, tell them why, make friends. If you go in there once a month for one year, by the 13th visit, they are going to take your order for something, I can almost guarantee you, but that's what it's gonna take. And by the way, it better not be those top tier. So last final word, here's what you're asking for. Not a Daytona, not a GMT, not a Skydweller, not a Submariner. Why don't you start with a Milgauss or one of the Explorers? That's your best bet. Once the relationship is slowly formed, you can kind of work on it, nurture it, you know, take care of it and grow it from there. What do you think of my advice to Vincent? Tell me in the comments. This is Goldberg. Peace out.